for a transplant that's exclusively designed to work on the temples. This gentleman just somehow um, over time has lost more of his temple hair than his frontal hairline. So we actually have no transplants in the central hairline. That's his own native hair. And he's never had a transplant before. So what we've done to work on the temple to, you know, the idea is reframing the face. It's so important that we don't look at hair as hair, but hair as an element to make the face look more attractive. And that's what really what we're trying to do here. It actually balances hairline better. And that's going to be an important attribute as well. What we're showing, I think it's really interesting in using a long hair uh, discussion is to, to, to really be, see, be able to see the sweep of hair in the design. Too many times, uh, for example, a gentleman flew in last week. He had a um, what's called a stick in place transplant, and he was shocked because the surgeon was in the room for about 20 minutes. I was in the room for four or five hours. And this is all, all these sites I designed myself. So I want you to see if you don't understand hair loss, you won't be able to understand how to redesign hair. What you're seeing in the upper portion right here, these are what's called sagittal sites. Sagittal sites, the sites are made like this, okay? These sites are coronal. They're made like this. Now, why is that? Sagittal sites allow me to create the, a, a, a tighter focus here to blend the hair down this way and create a transition zone from his existing hairs and, and, and come down. When you're at this point called the lateral canthus, the hair should go just slightly out and then down. If you look, this almost falling like a cascading element coming down. And that's what I've designed right here. Now, as we get into the actual transition over to the temple hair itself, we use coronal sites. Coronal sites are very, very flat. And in order to make, if you see, this is all long hair, so these hairs will fall out in a couple weeks or so. But the point is what I'm trying to show you with the long hair is that these sites are flat. And it's so important that these angles are flat because if they go out like this, they look fake. And I was talking to a gentleman Actually, what we're going to do is transplant this coming Monday, who has a very unnatural hairline, but a huge component is, wasn't balanced to his temple. He had, had it done somewhere else. And the goal here, again, this gentleman didn't have a transplant, but we just wanted to give better blending and shape to his hairline, was that the other outfit said they weren't going to do a transplant for his his temple, and I'm glad because they probably don't know how to do a good temple. And temples are the most difficult thing to create other than the crown. And you can see that the second thing is that these angles using the coronal technique are completely flat, completely flat. And they also blend in the angle to his existing hair. So there's a slight sweep forward, down, and back. And I looked at his natural hairlines, what I call ghost hairs. So the ghost hairs that were a remnant of his former temple, I follow that pattern. So some of these actually naturally sweep further back. His don't because that's not how his hairline was in youth. And so by looking at the ghost hairs, I angled these down about five degrees or so going backwards, not much further beyond that. Also, if you look at the temporal peak, the temporal peaks are all built with one hair grafts, and the temporal peak arches backwards. And so this temporal peak creates a very nice frame to his face. And what we've done here is that the back margin transitioning into his hair, so we've actually transitioned the sites into this hair, are actually three hair grafts. They're very, very strong, all delicately done by my wonderful team. As we go forward, actually, I'm going to show you that we actually use three hair grafts a little bit further forward on the right side because he has more recession on this side to make the two look visually closer. And then we've blended to the two hairs, and then all of this is one hair, and especially the temple point coming backwards, that's all one hair. And we've also done a little bit of sideburn work coming down and blending that. So that's one side. We're going to show a quick view of the other side. It's pretty similar. We're going to make a few comments there patterns. We are now at the other side and we're just going to do a very quick summary here. What you're seeing here again is the sagittal transition over to coronals. By the way, the, the other terms you may have heard is uh, sagittal is also known as parallel because it grows parallel to the hair directions. Perpendicular grows perpendicular to hair trans, um, zones. A lot of people like to use perpendicular transplants into the central hairline or central zone. We, prefer, we don't prefer to do that. It's not to say anything bad about people that do perpendicular transplants. We only use perpendicular primarily just for the temple. And the reason is we find that we can control angles pretty well in the central zone. And if they're about 30 to 35 degrees or 40 degrees, it won't make a difference. The angulation here is really, really critical. And when we do perpendicular transplants into the central scalp, the fear, especially in someone that would need a second transplant, we would have a higher chance of transecting previous work and also transecting uh, their own hair. So I think in our hands, perpendicular transplants into
the central scalp, when, if they have hair there, or a transplanted hair, I think there's too much of a risk for us to actually transect, and there's really no gain. Whereas here, the gain is real flatness, and that's a, the key with this is angulation. And doing a long hair transplant, hopefully it's still relatively clear, clear to see with a close-up macro lens, is actually how flat and well-directed these hairs are to match natural angles in a gentleman that um, just needed a temple transplant.